of God's Word, I invite you to go ahead and be turning to the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, as we begin looking at verses 21 to 26. You know, every Monday or so, Pastor Chuck and I will just kind of get together, we'll review um, the, the previous Sunday, what had gone on, and then he'll ask me, where, where are you going with, with the next message? And we're in the Sermon on the Mount, and so it would be very easy for me to say, well, we're going to go um, and pick up uh, in verse 21, and um, murder begins in the heart. Murder, that, that's, that's really, I, that's kind of a downer for uh, this service. I mean, Jason's coming, we're going to be uh, having him share his testimony. Um, it's going to be an exciting day, and I'm going to be talking about murder begins in the heart. I'm like, you know, I, God, I, I, you know, I know that this is what I'm supposed to preach on, but this just really is not tracking with the, the ambiance and the feel of the worship service that I'm picturing in my mind. And then I called Jason on Thursday, and uh, we began to talk and uh, ask him, and he's going to share his testimony, and as he begins to, to talk, and I'm, and I, I think I'm going to be preaching on and I kind of said it, Sermon on the Mount, um, anger, murder begins in the heart. That's, that's exactly what my testimony is going to be about. Yeah, talk about, oh, wow. Really? Okay, God, you got this. God, God is always in control. God is always sovereign. He knows exactly what we need to hear when we need to hear it. And so thank you for just being willing to share your heart about uh, what God was doing in your life. And even after you became a Christian, because folks, even after we become a follower of Jesus Christ, as Jason said, things don't always just kind of even out and are just uh, roses and petals for the rest of your life. Sometimes we struggle. Sometimes we struggle lifelong with certain issues. And as we saw last week, Jesus says, I've come not to abolish the law, but to to fill it up. In other words, to to make its meaning known clearly. Why? Because I am the lawgiver. I am the one who actually gave the law, and I know what it's supposed to mean. And so for the rest of chapter 5, beginning in verse 21, Jesus is going to go through a series of topics that we deal with that the scribes and the Pharisees, they had so misinterpreted and misapplied the law that Jesus was going to say, no, that it's much deeper than just murder. We sang about it a moment ago, did we not? It's coming back to the, what, the heart of worship, because Jesus, above all else, is concerned with our heart, because if we love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, we will serve Him, right, Pastor Chuck? We will live for Him, but it, it starts with our heart, and that's what He wanted to teach His disciples that day on that mountainside, and that's what he wants to remind us about this morning, that Jesus above all else cares for our heart, because if our heart is right, then we'll be in right step with God. If you have your copy of God's Word and you're able to stand, I invite you to stand as we read from Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 21 through 26. Uh, throughout the the rest of this chapter now over and over again uh, jesus will say at the beginning of each of these uh, groups uh, you have heard that it was said you have heard that that it was said in other words you've heard the teaching of the scribes and the pharisees you've heard the teaching of those experts in the law Uh, they have so built up the law and so misinterpreted what i intended for the law to be you've heard that it was said do not murder And whoever murders will be subject to judgment. And the Pharisees and the scribes no doubt would have said, hey, that's right, that's what we taught. We we don't murder. We're not murderers. So the law doesn't, we're, we're fine with that part of the law. Verse 22. But I tell you, who's the one telling? The one who gave the law, the lawgiver, is telling. But I tell you, you've misunderstood. You've misinterpreted. I tell you, everyone who is angry with his brother or sister, would be subject to judgment. What, what do you mean? What do you mean? Murder, murder's the standard, not anger, because the scribes and the Pharisees, they were, man, don't let them fool you, they were an angry bunch. 
So they had set the standard so high. We don't murder anybody. But yet every day they were walking around with anger and bitterness in their heart. And no doubt in the three-year ministry of Jesus, they were the most angry and most bitter and most wrathful at the Son of God. At the end of his life, they, that anger and that bitterness and that wrath would nail him to an old rugged cross. But yet that was part of his plan from the very beginning that by his precious blood that he might forgive every sin that we have ever committed. Yes, even the sin of anger. He goes on to say, whoever insults his brother or sister will be subject to the court. Whoever says you fool will be subject to hellfire. So if you are offering your gift on the altar, and there you remember that your brother or sister has something against you. In other words, you're, the, you're the, in the wrong. You're the one who has wronged somebody else. And you remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled with your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Verse 25, reach a settlement quickly with your adversary while you are on the way with him to the court. For your adversary will hand you over to the judge and the judge to the officer. You will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out of there until you have paid the last penny. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. Father, I thank you uh, for Jesus. And I thank you that he cares about our heart and the condition of our heart. And Father, I pray this morning if there's anyone here who has never had a heart change, a heart transplant, who has never repented, and believe the gospel and trust in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Father, I pray that today is the day that they would receive that new heart by grace through faith, would they be saved. And Father, I pray for followers of Jesus this morning, and maybe who are struggling with anger, maybe who are struggling with resentment, maybe who are struggling with wrath, maybe who are struggling with divisions and divisiveness. Father, I, I pray this morning that you would uh, speak to hearts and to minds that that Jesus might change them day by day, sometimes moment by moment throughout this day. Father, I pray this morning that your spirit would so move in our lives uh, to fill us, uh, to empower us, and to control us, uh, that we might live lives that are truly reflecting uh, Jesus Christ as Savior and as Lord. Father, speak through your word. Might we apply it to our life even today in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, folks, three things this morning quickly. Jesus cares about the condition of our heart. Jesus cares about the condition of our heart. Folks, he could have started with any other area in our life. As he is kind of laying out what he had just taught the disciples, what he had just said about the scribes and Pharisees, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And then he begins to explain that, and he starts with the very first thing, which is anger. Why, why do you think Jesus started with anger? Because he knew that anger is one of those things that we struggle with time and time and time again. Oh, we, we might not like to say that. We might like to, no, I, I'm, I'm not ever angry. I'm not. Folks, God knows our hearts. And he knows sometimes even those little things that will perturb us, those little things that just will, will get us angry. We say, well, I, you know, I, I'm, I was teaching the, the senior ladies this morning. I had a beautiful time with them this morning. We were talking about just how we live life. And I said, I'm going to talk about anger. You know, just when I think that I got anger under control, just when I think I, I'm good, I get on 17 toward 95 going south to Central Park. So, so if you've ever been on 17 going south to get on 95 to go south to Central, you know there's one lane, the right-hand lane. It is the only lane that goes on to 95 south. The middle lane does not go on 95 south. The middle lane will take you to 95 north. The left-hand lane doesn't go to 95 north or south, only the right-hand lane. I know that. Everybody that lives in this area knows that. Truckers know that. I'm getting a little, truckers know that. But yet time and time again, truckers and cars with Virginia license plates will be in the middle lane. Why? 
because they want to bypass everybody that's doing the right thing to stay in the right-hand lane to get all the way up to that last light by the shell and sometimes even pass the light to then sneak in. If I'm walking in the Spirit, I let them in. But let's just say every now and then I get as close to the car in front of me and do not look their way and in my mind am saying, no way, buddy, you're not getting in this day. I'm just getting a little angry thinking about that now. No, no, I did, I did have this bit of advice for the senior. Like, if you're, if you're going to be driving around this area, it might be best not to have any Jesus fish or not to have any bumper stickers of, uh, of churches on your... But you know, Jesus knew, did he not, that, that anger, more often than not, is we can struggle with. But Jesus is concerned about our heart. And Jesus here is concerned not, not just about the outward externals of murder. Oh, no, man, you, you get to that point. Man, you, you're, you're far down the road. It starts much earlier than that. It starts in our heart. It starts with our heart. And folks, understand this morning, whether you're dealing and struggling with, with anger or maybe you're dealing and struggling with something else in your life, God is always ultimately concerned about the condition of our heart heart and particularly for Christians sometimes we forget that sometimes we forget sometimes we, we focus too much on the externals and folks, nothing wrong with with church membership nothing wrong with being baptized nothing wrong with serving in the church nothing wrong with giving and, and we saw that as we entered into the heart of worship and Pastor Chuck talked about all that's good but ultimately it's about our heart Sometimes we forget, even Samuel. You remember the, the Old Testament prophet Samuel? He, he was called by God to go and anoint a, a king to succeed Saul. Saul was the king of Israel. And you remember Saul. Saul was head and shoulders above everybody else. Saul was right out of central casting. Man, he looked the part. He was it. That's what they, the, the Israelites, they clamored for a king. And God gave him a king. And said, here's the king. And Saul fit the bill. And he looked the part but his heart was far from God. But God says, Samuel, I want you to go and go to Jesse's house and I want you to, to anoint a, a king. And sure enough, uh, Samuel would go to Jesse's house and uh, the very first uh, son of Jesse, he saw Eliab, he's like, man, that's it, he's it. He, this is Samuel, the man of God. He looked outwardly at Eliab and said, he's it, this is it. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and he said, certainly the Lord's anointed one is here before me. He, he looked the part. He, he looked so much the part that Eliab would actually serve in the army of King Saul. That, that's how much the part he looked. And even Samuel would forget that it's not about the externals. It's about the internal. And maybe you remember 1 Samuel 16 verse 7, but the Lord Yahweh said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or his stature because I have rejected him. Humans do not see what the Lord sees, for humans see what is visible. But the Lord sees the heart. Jesus cares about the condition of your heart. He cares about whether you know him as Savior, first and foremost. He, he cares about whether you know him and are following him as Lord and submitting your life to him, even as a follower of of his and sometimes that can be difficult and sometimes that's a, a daily struggle that we struggle with the Lord knows exactly what we struggle with maybe your thorn in the flesh isn't anger maybe your thorn in the flesh as we'll see next week is, is lust or adultery maybe, maybe it's truth telling maybe it's something else we all struggle maybe this morning you just need to be reminded Jesus cares about the condition of your heart but it's so often the case 
Even though we know and we sang just a moment ago, it's all about a heart of worship and coming back to Jesus, and it's all about him. It's not about us. Folks, understand whether you're a Christian or not, but particularly if you're a Christian, if you're a believer, when we walk outside a fellowship with the Lord, a heart that is walking outside of fellowship with Jesus feels and acts sinfully feels and acts simply. It feels and acts just as if you did not have Jesus as Savior. What does that look like? How does it manifest itself? Oh, it might manifest itself in murder, but folks, most of us will never rise to that level. Most of us will never murder somebody. But Jesus says that's not the standard. The standard is actually much higher than murder because the standard begins in the heart. It's not simply murder, but murderous or angry intentions. Jesus cares about the heart. And those intentions when we're not walking with Jesus manifest themselves in how we feel and even how we act, whether it's insulting our brothers and sisters in Christ, whether it's calling our brothers and sisters in Christ fools, whether it's not forgiving our brothers and sisters in Christ. And that perhaps is one of the saddest things for God himself, knowing that he has forgiven us, but yet we would not have a spirit of forgiveness for those who have offended us. And then it even goes to the point of outside the church to be argumentative or hot-headed with our adversaries. And Jesus says, reach a settlement. Why? Because don't, don't be a hothead. Don't be an argumentative. Folks, sinful feelings, not just sinful acts, including anger and grieve the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 30 and 31, Paul puts it this way. He says, don't grieve God's Holy Spirit. You were sealed by him for the day of redemption. What is that? Folks, if you know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, then his Holy Spirit, at the moment that you are born again, comes and takes up residence in your life. He'll never take that spirit away, but sometimes we can walk outside a fellowship of the Holy Spirit. We can grieve the Holy Spirit by what we do or by what we not do. And Paul said, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. You were sealed by him for the day of redemption. And here's one of the ways that we grieve the Holy Spirit. He says, let all bitterness and anger and wrath and shouting, and slander be removed from among you along with all malice. Folks, this morning, if you're a believer, then you've been called to walk in step with the Spirit. You've been called to walk as if Jesus is your Savior and your Lord to reflect Him. This morning, are you doing that? Are you struggling? Jason shared in his testimony time in his life, even as a believer, where he struggled. I appreciate so much his transparency. We struggle, and maybe, maybe it's not anger, but maybe it's something else you're struggling with this morning, and you're just grieving the Holy Spirit. And this morning, I ask God to change your heart. Folks, it's not just a one-time change. It's not just a, when you get saved, but folks, it's a day by day by day by day change, becoming more and more like Jesus Christ, becoming what? More conformed to the image of of Christ, so that when we reflect Jesus, we reflect him not perfectly, but we reflect him as a child of God that is growing in our faith, and when we're not walking with the Lord, that sin in our life, whether it be anger or other sin, diminishes the reflection that we are to have of Jesus. But folks, understand heart change comes in and through Jesus Christ and Christ alone, and a heart change by Jesus feels and acts spiritually. Only Jesus can give us a new heart, and when he has given us a new heart, he has given us his spirit, and we are not to grieve the Holy Spirit, but day by day, we are to be filled with the Spirit, we are to be empowered by the Spirit, and we are to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. When we are, then we will walk in His love, we will walk in His mercy, we will walk in His grace. Yes, we will walk in His forgiveness, forgiving one another as Christ has forgiven us. Paul goes on in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, and be kind and compassionate to one another. Kind of the opposite of that anger and that bitterness and that wrath. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another. And here's what Paul says. Even if we needed to be reminded, which we as believers, we should not need to be reminded of this fact, but sometimes we do, forgiving one another just as God also forgave you in Christ. Folks, if you've been forgiven, then we only have one marching order when it comes to forgiveness and that is to forgive other folk 
Why? Because we have been forgiven. And if we have been forgiven by Christ Almighty and what he did on the cross of Calvary for us, how much more so should his children forgive one another? To put aside anger, to put aside malice, to put aside wrath, to put aside slander. To be kind, compassionate, a heart that has been changed by Jesus. A heart that reflects Jesus. So we will not reflect him perfectly. But we are called to be perfect as even he is perfect. Folks, this morning, how are you ref reflecting Jesus? Are you grieving the Holy Spirit? Or are you being filled day by day and walking in step with the Spirit? You say, Pastor, I, I, sometimes I can't tell. Maybe, maybe I am. Maybe. Here's a test. You go to Walmart this afternoon. <laughs> go down 17 to get on 95 south. Go, go to your favorite restaurant and see, see how you respond when they don't get to your table as quickly as you think they need to get to your table. We kind of laugh at those things, but... Folks, there'll be any number of ways this week that we'll know. Are we grieving the Holy Spirit? Or are we walking in step with the Spirit? Might we, not because of our power, because we simply don't have the power, but might we, because of His great power that works in and through our weaknesses, might He give us grace to be able to reflect Jesus more and more this week than we did last week and should that glorious day not come for a little bit longer then tomorrow might we reflect Jesus even more than we did today Jesus has come that we might be empowered and set free to live out the glorious grace of his gospel, not because of us, but because of him. It's all about him, not about us. Let's pray. Father God, thank you.